Click Dork back again, and today we are going to have some fun, my friends, looking at one of the new connectors in Click Application Automation. It is for UiPath, a very popular vendor in the RPA space because they can do an awful lot of things. Let's go ahead and get started, and let me help you understand the options you have available with this connector. So I could go find jobs, list folders. What we're specifically going to focus on is starting a job. As part of one of my automations, I want to go fire off a robot and have it be deployed however it may throughout the robotic universe with UiPath. I simply drag the connector onto my makerspace the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to create a connection to this. And this will just connect using OAuth. So voila, I am now connected to my space. Let me show you what that means in terms of UiPath. And of course, if you've used UiPath, you will probably understand this. UiPath is driven from an orchestration system that is cloud-based. And so there's cloud.uipath.com, pure SaaS. Your company or organization will have a part of an ID here that would make you unique. This is the one that's for me. And then I can create as many tenants as I would like to. The one I am going to be using here is default tenant, and that's one of the parameters I'm going to need to input shortly. You'll notice here I'm allowed to have as many folders as I would like, and when I'm using the UiPath Studio, I can create my processes and then publish these things, and each one that gets published has a different version number or release number. The one that I'm going to be working with today is going to accept several arguments. If it doesn't have arguments, we'll ignore that when I, when I show you this in a minute. Um, but I did want to have some arguments. Notice that I've got some defaults here, mainly that it's going to send a Dalton.Ruer at click.com. I'm going to override that um, momentarily. It's got some default arguments for subjects and body, but of course, we want to override those as well. So understanding what's going on, and notice in this shared folder I can see these, and I also have a different process um, that is available to me in a different folder. So let's come back to here and look at these settings. The first is going to be, hey, I need to know which of your tenants, if you have multiples, you're going to use. I never really created other tenants, so I'm using the default one. And it needs two other things. One is the release key, or this crazy good, that's behind the scenes for those processes. Now, if, you're, you, if you've used Postman, you would be familiar with, hey, how do you go get those keys that are behind the scenes? Um, because they're not just on the screen. Um, well, the beautiful thing is I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Click is going to do the work for me. I can go look these up, and I'm looking for the one that says email that accepts input parameters. Ta-da! That was pretty easy. And what folder am I wanting to use this from? I'm looking at it from the shared folder. Once I've selected the process I'm going to run, the folder that I want to run it as part of, all I have to do is input the parameters. I've got two choices. I can add the keys individually, or I can paste the input in a JSON format. Well, in order to save us time, I've already created a JSON um, message that I'm going to override who the email goes to. I'm putting a subject in here, and I'm putting a body in here. And I can now say run and it is going to go and run that. If I come back to my editor, you'll see that I can have the input raw, or if I have input my JSON, it will show me these values as keys. 
So I can just as easily, if I don't have these and I don't, I'm not familiar with JSON, I simply come in and input these parameters that are needed. And of course, I would know, I would need to know what parameters are needed for that process. But it's pretty easy. I just come in here and I type them. And it, it can't get much easier than that. And behind the scenes, what's going to happen is we is click will actually convert this to the escaped JSON format that is needed for UiPath. And so I put those parameters in manually instead of worrying about the JSON. I can run this again. And so that it shows me that this is run. If I go out to my email server, I can do a query. And I see, hey, here's the new one that I use with my JSON format. And I can also see the one that has my new subject line that I just escaped in. So let me go ahead and delete all these emails. So we'll get rid of those. So now we can see that that's gone. And we come back and, we, and you got to be thinking, well, gee, that's, that's fantastic, Dalton. But if I'm integrating this with Click, the reason that I'm trying to integrate with Click is that I want this stuff to be pulled out of my application. I want to pass customer IDs to UiPath. I need to pass account managers' names to UiPath. I need to pass data that is coming from analytics. It's not really that fun for me to automate something that's hard-coded. Um, I need something to be more flexible. Well, I completely understand that. And so I've got an application here. Um, don't worry about the application. This is just a goofy screen I created to automate email. But basically, I've got some table with some data here where I've got search IDs being pulled from Twitter. I've got a date being pulled from Twitter. I got a search string uh, that was pulled from Twitter. And what I did here was I created a button that is going to execute an action. And it is going to call a specific um, automation that I've already sent. Notice that it's going to show me these. It's going to call this automation. And what's going to happen here, I've got a number of things here. I don't want to go too much in detail on these because I'm not trying to train you on all of the possible methods. But basically, I'm saying, hey, I need to create some inputs so that when this package gets called from being triggered, not from being manually, I want to capture the, the application and I want to capture the bookmark. Well, what is the bookmark? Well, it is the fact that when I call this, I say I want to include the selections. So if I have filtered things in my app, I want those filters going across so that my automation knows to use that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, and then I want to sleep for just a couple of seconds um, to give it time to get all of this thing configured. And then I want to apply the bookmark. And there's details on how to do these things. So again, I'm not walking you through how to build this manually. Um, just know that I can apply the bookmark from the application that came in and from the selections that came in. And so it will then filter to the selections that I have set in my app. And I want to do something called get straight, tab straight table data. And what this does is I pick the sheet and I pick the object. So this sheet, this object, I want to get data from because this table is where I'm going to be passing the data from. Hopefully that makes sense. Given how many rows are there, it will then iterate through, as you can see here through this iteration, all through however many rows I've got selected, and then I'm going to call a UiPath job again. Now you'll notice, hey, look, I've got default tenant. I've got that same release key. Um, the same process I'm going to run is going to be running out of the shared input folder. 
I've got the email address. Oh, look, I'm hard coding that email address. But here's what's interesting. I need a subject. Well, I want that subject to be this search ID. Right? I don't know that now. I need it. Well, the way that Click works for these automations is really slick. I'm calling this. It will iterate through one item at a time. And all I need to do here is say, okay, let me go look at this. Hey, you know what? I've got a search ID. I've got a search created at. I've got a search string. I would like the search ID. And for my body, guess what? I get to do that same thing. I get to say, hey, I'm going to be iterating through. And while I'm doing that, which of these values are out there do I choose? And it just marks, go get these things. So it's going to show me the ID as the subject, and it's going to show me the body as the text. Well, I don't want to press run here. I'm just going to save this. So we're just going to save this instead. I'm going to close this up. And when you close an automation, you're really just seeing the history um, or what's going on. So I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to come to my application. I'm going to say I'm done editing. I'm going to press this button which is now going to invoke my automation with these three rows of data. And so when I press that you'll see it's going to take some time. If I come over here you'll see it is in the process of running. So I can kind of get input. Once I know that's done, my button is clear again, so it has completed. And if I come over here and I try to look at this process, I can go look at what had occurred. And so it started, it did its sleep, it handled its inputs, it handled blah, 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 blah. If I wanted to walk through, it would show me the items that it walked through so that I can have a complete audit trail of this stuff, which is great. Well, if I go to my email and I ask for the email again, holy smoly, I got three items. The subject is the ID, and if I open one of these emails, look, the, t the body is now populated from these fields. So super cool new connector for you. Um, you will have this available you can pop that in again easy to make the connection it is going to use oauth based on who you are within your sas tenant and pass that for you you do not have to worry about all the ui path apis or how you would do that manually and then it's just going to browse for you what process do you want and what folder do you have in your ui path that you're going to use it for I'm going to have plenty more videos uh, coming forward in the future um, showing you much more complex integrations and the reasons why you would integrate. Um, but since this is a brand new connector, and some of you may or may not be familiar with this, I wanted to show it to you. And by all means, if you are a ClickSense customer already and you are already a UiPath customer as well, um, feel free to start giving this a go in your application automations. And as always, don't hesitate to reach out to me if you've got any questions as you're trying to make this happen. Have a great day, everybody.